After five months of waiting in Canada, not having a valid work permit, not being able to leave the country, it is finally time for me to go to the border and get a new visa. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Caitlin and I've been living in Canada for the last few years, traveling and working while exploring this beautiful country. In 2023, I decided I wasn't ready to leave Canada, so I began the journey to get a new work permit. This has been a long time coming, but this weekend, it's finally time to head to the border. Instead of just flagpoling, we're making a weekend trip of it and heading down to Whitefish, Montana. So come for a quick ski getaway with us as we cross two land borders and I finally share all the information about our visa process. Let's go. So we're officially over halfway now. The trip from Banff down to Whitefish takes just over five hours and we've been in the car for just under three. So we're getting there. I've already had a nap. We've already had our big sing along. So we just have the rest of it to get through, which is a little bit of a grind, um, but we're gonna cross over into the US and then spend two days down in Whitefish, which is really cool. I, I've looked it up on Google Images and I swear it looks like Bam, this little town. So I'm so excited to actually go see it. And we're gonna ski tomorrow, which will be fun. But we just have this drive ahead of us. It snowed last night, so it's really pretty, but really ironic because it hasn't been snowing at all. And the one day we leave, we actually get fresh snow. But fingers crossed they got it down in my fish too. And it'll be a great day on the hill tomorrow. We just stopped at the gas station to pick up some snacks, get some more fuel, because it's a long drive, but back on the road now. We've just arrived at the US border. We haven't crossed through this one before, but we have been through US land borders a couple times now. Um, should be pretty simple. They should just speak to us at the window. Then we'll have to go in and pay like $6 each. I think it's I-95 rings a bell. I don't know if that's the right code, um, but it's basically just a land crossing tax, but passport's ready to go. Fingers crossed it goes smoothly. Is it doing it? Yes. yes. Where you guys live? In Banff. Why are you here? Uh, we're just doing a weekend in Whitefish. Where do you stay while you're here? When you go back into Canada? The Thursday. Thursday. What was the thing called? Did it say? I 94, I was close. We've officially crossed over into the States. It was super easy. We just went inside. Tristan's been to the States in the last three months, so he didn't have to do anything. He was good to go. Uh, but whenever you cross by land, you have to get an I-94. So I was close before, and it, it only cost $6. It's valid for three months. It's just like the visa waiver crossing fee. But we're done. We're in super easy. It took like 10 minutes. Let's just hope they let us back into Canada. <laughs> So I realized I probably glossed over that a little bit. We, considering we've been living in Canada for the last couple of years, we've crossed over the a land border to the US. I think this was my third time, it was Tristan's fourth. So it's not unfamiliar to us, but I realize if you've never done it, you probably are like, I didn't explain anything. But basically how it works, if you're interested, is you just drive up to the window, they'll ask you to roll down the window, you'll chat to them, they'll ask where you're going, how long you're staying, where you're staying, when we re entering Canada. Um, just like a couple of those questions. They open the back door, how to look in the car. They just kind of do that really quickly. They take your passports at the same time. Um, and because Tristan had entered the States a month ago, his land border fee was already paid last month. So he could have just driven straight through, but because I was in the car as well, we, they just asked us to pull over, you go inside. There was no one else in there. We're at quite a quiet border um, today. But you just go in and then they take what they call your biometrics, which is normally your fingerprints as well, but I've had that done quite a few times now, so they probably just have it on file. Um, but they just take a photo of you and then you just pay the $6 fee. Uh, and then that fee is what's valid for three months. So we can come and go as many times in the next three months as we want and they could just wave us through and we wouldn't have to go in next time. Um, but it's super easy. I feel like the border offices can be a little bit intimidating sometimes but they're just doing their job. Overall, they're super lovely and we've never had anyone that has given us a hard time or anything. Yeah, that's kind of the overview of how it all works. So if you're interested or if you have any more questions, let me know, but it's really straightforward. 
so much less intimidating than going through an airport as well. So I think it's great. So we've just made it into Whitefish. It's taken us just over five hours, like five and a half hours, including all our stops. It looks like such a cute little town, kind of a mix between like Fernie, Banff and Jackson Hole. We'll hopefully go out and explore it a little bit later. It's pretty gray today, but we're just about to check in. We're pulling in now. We're staying at a hotel called Apres Whitefish. So we've just checked into our hotel for the weekend and it is so cute. This whole hotel has the most like cozy, vintage apres ski vibe, which is very fitting for the name of it. Um, and we paid for the king bed instead of the queen and it's so nice. Let me show you around. First of all, this is the view from our room and that is the ski resort we're gonna be riding tomorrow, which is lovely. And then it's just so gorgeous. like. It's beautiful, it's big, it's like lots of really cute details. Hi Tris. <laughs> just woken up in Montana and it is the most stunning bluebird day we have not had weather like this in a little while now but we've woken up to fresh snow on the mountain beautiful clear blue skies and we are so excited to hit the slopes and go explore a new mountain we just have one day in Montana in Whitefish but I'm gonna mainly focus on filming for tomorrow where we're gonna cross back into Canada I'm gonna to explain the whole visa process and everything we've been through to get to this point so if you're here for that stay tuned otherwise let's go snowboarding also if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet make sure you do it now let's go I just need one night where it just feels right. The stars are aligned. We do what we like. I just need one night where it just feels right. The stars are aligned. I just need one night. I just need one night where it just feels right. The stars are aligned. We do what we like. I just need one night where it just we're one run into the day and i think this might be the most beautiful resort conditions we have ever ridden it's stunning up here we are so happy
it's about midday now. We have ridden a good chunk of the mountain. We're gonna make our way up to Summit House um, just to get some food, enjoy a beer. It is the best day. I think this is the best day we've had all season. And honestly, one of the best resorts we've ridden. We are obsessed with this mountain. Oh, the views and the trees are just so stunning. This is the best day ever! Today is the day that we finally head back up into Canada and through Canadian immigration. But before we take off from Whitefish, I thought I would just quickly give you a little background into how we've kind of gotten to this position. Before I get into any of it, I just want to really clearly say that none of this is legal advice. We have had a lawyer guiding us through this process um, and we've gotten all of our information through that. So that's why I've been hesitant to talk about visa things online because I don't want to give anyone advice because we still honestly are just getting by and scraping through till we make it. Um, so this is our story, but it's not in any way designed to advise you on what to do. If you've been following me for a little while, you know that we have well surpassed our two year working holiday visa now. So our first visa actually expired in September of 2023. So it's been about five months and we had no initial intentions to actually stay longer than that for so long. Like the minute we landed in Canada, everyone was asking like, are you going to get PR? You should start now. Like it was a whole big thing. And for a while we were like, we wanted to do everything right to make sure that we had opportunities available to us. But then it hit a point where we were unhappy in our jobs and those jobs were technically going to be beneficial if we wanted to move forward with PR or a future visa. But we decided our happiness at the time was worth more than that. So from just a couple months in, Tristan and I decided to enjoy our two year working holiday visa for what it was, not worry about the future and then deal with the rest when it came. Now it wasn't until just a couple months before our visa expired that it kind of hit us that we weren't ready to go. And what happened is I actually started packing up all of our snow gear. My parents were visiting, we were gonna send it home with them because winter had ended and it just broke my heart. Packing up all of our gear, taking the bindings off our board and knowing that we wouldn't get another chance to ride them in Canada. It just did not sit well with me. I was unhappy with it. And it was kind of at that point we started thinking, you know, what if, what if we, we stayed a little longer. Now we didn't actively do anything until about three months before our visa ended. And we were very fortunate to have an opportunity presented to us. We didn't actively seek this out, but Tristan was offered a sponsorship and that was why we decided to stay. Now we did not really have enough time to sort everything out, but we did not also think it would take this long. We thought three months, it'd be close, but we can make it work. Eight months later, we're finally getting the visa. So the LMIA process is essentially a labor market impact assessment. And it is where they put up your job. So Tristan works in a supervisor role 
uh, and they had to list his job for a month, make sure that no Canadian or permanent resident could apply for it that had the same or higher qualifications that he did. And then they could prove that they kind of needed him to be in the country because he was working in a job that wasn't fillable by someone else. Now for me, I am just the tag along to this process. Tristan and I have been together for almost eight years, so we very much classify as common law. Um, so I am getting a spouse visa through his sponsorship. Um, but it has been a really, really long, confusing, tedious process. We thought we would have a visa by the time our visa expired and we were completely wrong in that assumption. The day before our visa expired, we're like, are we gonna have to drive to the States? Like, are we gonna have to leave the country? What's going on? Uh, and we got an official extension. So we both got extensions that held us through until March of 2024, so next month. Um, so we're completely covered. We could still work, we could still do everything, but we couldn't leave the country. If we left the country, it was going to forfeit everything. So for the last five months, we haven't been able to go home, to travel anywhere else. It's just been Canada-based, which is not the longest amount of time compared to what some people wait, but it's still frustrating knowing that if something goes wrong at home, we can't go or we go and we sacrifice things. We are so, so fortunate to have been able to stay in Canada longer. His visa is a two year closed work permit, whereas mine should be a two year open work permit. I'm really hoping that that is the case, but that is the whole process we've been through. I know there are so many different ways to get visas. And I think a lot of the time online, you hear that there's absolutely no way to get a second working holiday visa. And I guess we're not going on to another working holiday, but there are ways to do it. There's companies called ROs, registered organizations, and essentially in like the most layman's terms ever, they purchase these working holiday visas and they sell them back to you. So you can do that. I know they range from like, I think the average pricing that I've heard of is about $4,000 Australian, I think. Um, I know of people that have got it as cheap as 1500. I know people that have paid way more, but that is another way to get another two year open work permit. Sponsorships are another option. I know there's a few other options as well. If you have a second passport, you can get a second two year working holiday visa just on a different passport. Um, what other options are there? I think there's another one as well, actually called young professionals. But yeah, none of this is, is advice. It's just kind of everything that we know. Um... One thing I did forget to mention while I recorded this explanation was our total expenses throughout the process. So for me personally, the total cost for getting this visa was $1,300. It We had to pay $575 in fees up front. Then it was $500 for the extension because the LMIA did not come through in time. And then we had to pay $255 at the border. Now that was my cost, Tristan's was $100 less because his is a closed work permit, but that was our total expense. But that has been our whole process so far. So we are, I think about an hour from the border. It's pretty small, so I'm really hoping we get lucky and no one else is there so we can get through pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I will, I'll let you know how everything goes. Anyway, we're gonna check out, go for breakfast now and then start our drive up. All right, we're pretty much just arriving at the border now. Since we moved to Canada, we have kept everything we need in these folders, like all our documents, all our work permits, everything for that. Um, so we're gonna take those in uh, with, along with our passports and fingers crossed we are not here for long. All right, we are back in Canada. Everything is sorted now. We are so relieved. This has been on our mind for eight months. Eight months, we have not had clarity over what's happening. We have not known if we can stay in Canada. We have not had a work permit that's authorized us to do things. And I'm so happy it's sorted. We were super lucky. We had a really nice border officer. A little intimidating at the start, they always are, but he even took us into a room, talked us through some things that we weren't aware of. 
um, and he was great. We were at the border for about an hour. They went through everything with us. We had all our documents organized and he even said we were one of the more organized couples that he has seen come through. So it's absolutely worth having everything in a folder. But we're done. I have a new permit. It is another open work permit. It is just shy of two years because Trist it's based off Tristan's and his is a two year work permit from like a month ago. Um, oh, but I'm so happy it's over. Now we just need to go and renew our Alberta Health and get uh, updated SIN numbers. But other than that, we're done. We can enjoy just living in Canada. It's so, so nice. You feel good? Yeah. <laughs> if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, we have another four hours back to Banff. So we are gonna sign off here. Thank you for coming along this weekend with us. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. I post a lot of working holiday, Canada and travel-based content, and I'm sure you'll find something of value. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.